And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Lucian Ephemerals. Bringing this deck back, this is a really fun deck we played about 10 days ago or so. Um, you know, it's another Hecarim deck where we're going to be aggressive, but we're pairing that with some Demacia stuff with Lucian and Senna getting in here. Of course, Lucian cares about seeing four allies die to level up or Senna die. And so if you have things like Haunted Relic, Shark Chariot, those things are uh, things that are very good at dying for leveling up the Lucian. Remember at the end of the video, the last time that we played this, talked about how I really wanted a one drop, and so we put Fleet Feather Trackers in. So that's going to be the new thing that we didn't play the Fleet Feather Trackers last time, but we put them in at the end of the at the end of the run. Um, we're going to have them in this time. It kind of gives us some more challenger, so some more interaction. Um, We'll have the, the trackers and the caretakers that can make multiple trackers, all of that uh, together with our challengers. Um, against aggro decks, we got the Radiant Guardians. They, they really help us out in those kind of matchups. Um, and so, pretty sweet little deck here. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Peric. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Okay, let's see. Uh, Lucian Ephemerals. We need to go over to the play part, not the collection part. That would help. Let's go play five games over in ranked, like we always do. Well, I am very, very happy to have you here, Chilla. Thanks for joining. All right, let's mulligan, 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 mulligan. Maybe I'll keep that Senna. What are we playing against? Vi? Hmm, so Karina Control. Senna's not very good against Karina Control, being a 4-2, like, 2 health, very easy to kill. Um, I could, maybe I should keep this Glimpse Beyond to use in response to removal. Vengeance can kill Vi. I don't know. I just don't... There are situations where those cards can be useful, but I just don't love that hand. And so I just want to try again. <clears throat> this isn't great either. Three pair. Push back the dark. Playing Haunted Relic just means I'm attacking for uh, for three with that. I'd rather try to combine Haunted Relic with Blighted Caretaker. Uh, Sejuani is probably better with Bilgewater than Noxus. Don't get in my way. Hmm. This hand's been just so awkward. Wish I would have kept the Senna. I'm doing this my way. We're drawing basically, <laughs> basically no cards. We're just drawing it. Lucian, single combat, blighted caretaker, and. Haunted Relic. So I could waste Haunted Relic and Caretaker and level up Lucian. But like if they have removal spell in response to Lucian, that's a huge waste. Ugh, this is just not good. Hurts. 
I'm I'm kind of worried about Withering Whale as far as like like not playing Haunted Relic the previous turn. I probably should have though. Hey, Kit Kats. Day's going good. I like that name, Kit Kats. And TK, what's up? So if I, if I go Blighted Caretaker, I only have room for one Ephemeral Challenger. I do go Blighted Caretaker. Single combats are really not doing very much else. Where are you? This was the most awkward hand. turn. Alright. Keep them from attacking with Vi. That's pretty nice. There's no way I can play Hecarim and Blighted Caretaker, is there? It doesn't look like it, and not kill my Hecarim, of course. Hey, stream's going good. You you just came into the first game of the day. Just started. Just the most awkward of hands still.
Yeah, we're playing against Karina Control. Yeah. This card would have been so good to have early to help turn on all this stuff. Just never had it. Earlier. All right. Well, it's just gonna get better than that. That was that was as bad as our deck can possibly look. That <laughs> that really was. That was that was ugly. But the other game, like we're we're gonna get some good games now. Got to get the, got to get the bad one out of the way. Our deck's a lot better than that. Okay, this already looks better. Definitely getting rid of relentless pursuits. Um, what do I think about Senna? Here we have the attack token turn two, so we play Shark Chariot on two, Senna on three. Caretaker is going to be more of like a turn five play. Once we find another two drop to sacrifice to it. Um, unfortunately, it's a turn five play. We've drawn another turn five play and a turn six play and a turn seven play. Not ideal. Oh, I can't wait. Yes. Yeah, that is that's that one, Colby. find something to do here turn four hopefully another ephemeral uh, okay could be worse could be worse That unfortunately was worse. All right, Curse Keeper is a real important card for us to find, though. Turn two, usually, but you know it's a little late now. But it's definitely an important card for us to have access to. card that helps helps enable a lot of other cards in our deck. That's a good hand over there. Multiple Crimson Disciples and Transfusions. It's a good hand over there. All right, that's a good draw because that, uh, you know, I can play that and play Radiant Guardian. That's really nice. Yeah, Light and Ice is Lux and Ash. Will be yep, light for Lux, ice for Ash. Strike for justice. Okay, <clears throat> this Radiant Guardian is really important. Well, that was nice. Shadow 
It's like being able to attack with Hecarim. Even if it dies, we have Rekindler to bring it back. And we have new Hecarim anyway. I'm not sure which Twist of Fate deck's the most competitive, in my opinion. I don't know. I, there's so many good ways to, to do it. I really like it with Freljord, but uh, the the Vi deck that we're playing up next with Twisted Fate, Twisted Vi, that was one that I've only played at one time, but we went 5-0. Um, and it felt pretty good, so we'll we'll try it again, you know, here next and see if see if it still feels really good. You know, it could be that one. So is advise maybe your favorite deck you've, you've played? Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a really good one. All right, so let's see. We're going to have you block you. <clears throat> We're going to have you block... Uh, you can block there. You can block there. Hold back the darkness! Hmm. Puts me down to six. Go down to nine, not six. Again, it's okay if my Hecarim dies they walked around. with me having this other stuff. So do I want to play Blighted Caretaker or not? If I do play Blighted Caretaker, then I'm playing like Senna and Fleet Feather Tracker also. Or I just attack and then play new Hecarim. Yeah, let's play Caretaker. So I want to, I'm playing the Caretaker because I don't want them to have a blocker that kills my Radiant Guardian. So I'm kind of seeing what they do. Let's see. One, two... Hmm... Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Attacking with too many things. So basically I'm not gonna be able to get the shark back because I just don't I don't have room for the shark. Unless unless I attack with this first, yeah, then I can get the shark. Because the shark the, the three one shark's better than the other thing. Oh, we took, took multiple pulling strikes from them. 
interesting. Okay, well, if that's the case, I can just attack with everything. I guess I'll leave this back. Yeah, that's fine. So they'll, they'll be able to trade with Radiant Guardian here. But I'm going back up to 14, and they're basically out of cards. So I think that we're perfectly fine. We should have this. Hey, fair Vlad. What's the Metal World game in? Hecarim's awesome. Yeah, all right, we, so this is our second game today. Our first game was just super awkward. It was one of those you mull all four cards in your hand and you just get a really, really awkward hand. Um, you know, like we had four pairs like to start with. We had two Lucians, two Blighted Caretakers with nothing but Lucians, two, um, two single combats. It was just, it was just really awkward. So that happens. It was as bad as our deck could look. Um, all right. Nah, no mistrates. Pain is nothing. Said one. Okay, so we'll just. I want to play this Hecarim before I rekindle her Hecarim. I know that block doesn't do anything. Um, saves one life. But honestly, this caretaker, that's that's as good as this caretaker is going to do. I'm never going to attack with it. I, mean, I could sacrifice it to Butcher, but the Butcher doesn't do anything anyway either. We'll just get two damage on this. Uh, Sejuani, so like, Sejuani can't just eat Hecarim because it'll be a 5-4 now instead of a 5-6. So... Metal World Gaming, what would you... I know you, you play a ton of Heimerdinger. What would you think if... Um, if in two weeks um, they nerf Heimerdinger to where where whenever you get... Whenever you get a turret, instead of it costing zero for the turn, it costs one for, it, for the turn. Obviously, that makes the card worse, obviously. But it, it is kind of ridiculous getting all those free bodies huh we were at 2073 and then one and we're still at 2073 they make ranking up pretty hard yeah i mean it definitely make him worse but you think he'd still be playable because I, I feel like he'd still just be good like getting those cards like getting all those cards is still awesome <laughs> Six health hacker and one's the boss. I know, right? Uh, Ezreal Swain. Let's get rid of the caretaker. Hello. Probably the haunted relic also. Yeah, we don't need that haunted relic either. Yeah, completely agree. Arnold says it's the perfect storm. You have the three mana spell bank. There's tons of great three mana spells. And um, the three mana turret is elusive. They could make like the... I don't know, like the three mana turret like quick attack and then I mean that's still kind of difficult to block I guess and then like the five mana one elusive or something like that or the three mana one is overwhelm and the six mana is elusive or I don't know or the two mana is elusive and so they transfusion like you know like this attack like I am kind of attacking into transfusion they would have that But I don't think we just sit back and not attack. Hmm. That's fine. After them? 
Got a very top heavy hand. Very top heavy hand. Block with the two two. Darn. They figured it out. I didn't think they were gonna figure it out, but they did. Yeah, we got yep, we got we got the chroniclers in here to go along. Yeah, curving Lucian into Senna into Chronicler, kill the Senna, bring it back. That is awesome. Yeah, we we got that. Um, we just <laughs> you're you're just seeing like all of our top end. We have one rekindler and then three Hecarim, three Radiant Guardian. Like those are our, my only six, my only five. Why would you make this attack? So you gotta have, so you're gonna have like, what, like Noxion Fervor, or like, you know, wanna use a, some other removal spell like that with. We have so many Hecarons, we, we shouldn't pass. What does the seven... What, is, what does the seven mana turret do? Is that the shield? Yeah, that's the barrier one? Yeah, that's the worst one. dog back here is just living its best life. <laughs> Y'all can't really see see her face if she looks so funny. She's just, she just sleeping, having a good time. Let's go. Justify yourself. And so we do have the single combat in case, you know, we want to use it with something. So what so I should probably fight what fight Swain with this? I mean, I guess I don't have to use it. I'm not, like, required to. Um, I just put Swain to just being a 3-1. I guess it'll be Swain will be a 4-2, because Swain's about to be leveled up. Yeah, Swain's going to be leveled up here. Oh, I guess, no, Swain won't be leveled up, because, right, because the gotcha's not going to do damage, because I'm doing a single combat. Never mind. Still, 3, 1, 4, 2. It's close. Yeah, because cause the tough, it didn't level up. Right.
And my other dog is just tearing up. Over. Go might. Oh. Uh. Tearing up a can. What's up, Dewan? Tips on using Swain? Yeah, uh, yeah, Sejuani Swain. Yeah, that Sejuani Swain's a great way to use Swain for sure. Uh, that's probably the best uh, Swain deck. I will break him. Uh, only yeah, this is only our second or third. This is only just our third game today, so we haven't really, I haven't really. Um, I don't think I can really say what I've seen a, a lot of on the ladder today. Just started. Um. Let's attack! Yeah, there's other ways you can use Swain. We've played Swain, yeah, with Yasuo. Played Swain with Fizz, Twisted Fate, um, Vladimir. Uh, Vladimir one's pretty interesting. Like with Demacia, tough stuff as well. Yeah, put together a, a Swain Fizz deck. That was a, a donation deck for somebody said that Swain and Fizz were their two favorite um, champions to put it to put together a deck with Fizz and Swain. Yeah, it worked out all right. All right, we're two and one, and we are like lower than what we started the, the day at. Yeah, Swain, yeah, Swain Twisted Fate definitely vi very, yeah, definitely very viable. But Sejuani Sedju Swain's probably the best version of that kind of deck. Sejuani, awesome. All right, heck, nothing wrong with Hecarim, but I'm just gonna mulligan Hecarim uh, from the opener. Look for some more synergy with these two. So we don't have the attack token turn two, so we're gonna go Curse Keeper turn two, not Shark Chariot. Hmm. We're gonna try to save Lucian. Maybe we have seven total mana with regular mana and spells. We can go like Lucian and then go Senna and Glimpse Beyond Senna. Maybe. Maybe something like that. I'm turning on Withering Whale pretty good for them. Alright, no Withering Whale. It's not like it's that good anyway. It's my shark dying is whatever. And then this thing dying is, is a positive. Yeah, I spent, um, let's see, Sunday and, okay, so Sunday I started around in the low 400s. Oh my gosh, I just passed, I didn't play anything. I meant to play something, sorry, I was just talking. 
let's talk about the uh, the MMR system. Sunday we started in the low 400s and we were 500. I was exactly 500 on the day, exactly the same number of wins and losses, and ended the day, um, you know, like around a thousand with the exact same number of wins and losses. And then Monday, again, the exact same number of wins and losses again, and ended the day around 1500, something like that. So basically, so two days, I went from 400 to 1500 with going, <laughs> going 500. Was not ideal. Um, let's see. There's a chill in the air. I'll free the souls you've taken. I worry about your own first. I did want to lead with Haunted Relic and then and let them Withering Whale first. I want Lucian to play first. Um. I mean, I guess they're just going to take all of this and kill my leveled up Lucian. So if I attack with Senna, if they block... With, if they block... Uh, Thresh blocks Senna. That means Thresh go, turns into a 3-2, so Thresh can't challenge Lucian as easily. I mean, my my Lucian's not gonna level up until after afterwards though, because the shark is the last thing. So like, I can't I can't just attack. I can't just attack with Lucian and have Lucian be a four three and trade with Thresh, because the shark will be afterwards. So a lot of people want an LP system instead of the MMR system. Yeah, or just gain points if you win, lose points. So like an LP system incentivizes playing, right? Because then you need to, you can't gain points unless you play. Where an MMR system incentivizes you not to play. If you lose, if you lose more points than you gain. Like if you're at a certain rank, you just don't, you just don't want to play anymore because you don't want to lose your ranking. So you probably want to incentivize people to play your game, not incentivize people to stop playing your game. That does sound like a bad idea of having a system where it's beneficial to not play. So they're going to let me rally? Why are they letting me rally? Are they trying to bait out Glimpse Beyond and then use something something else? What is going on here? What what is, what are we doing here? Oh, level up Thresh. That's that's what they want. They want to level up Thresh. Okay. Figured it out. Oh, when 
Smash is really good. And Radiant Guardian's really good. Wow, kept them from attacking with a leveled up Thresh. Wow. So I, <clears throat> I want Lucian in play before they play removal, right? Because then I want to level up Lucian, or I want to sorry get the get the attack thing with Lucian. But I also don't want them to kill my Lucian either. So it's kind of like the weird thing of like I want them to spend mana so like they don't kill Lucian. Um, but I also want Lucian in play. We get another attack token, and then we can play Haunted Relic after attacks. You cannot escape. And then uh, bring these sharks back again. No. I had removal for Lucian. I did my best for them to not kill my Lucian. But they didn't. They didn't agree with not killing Lucian. Ugh, that would have been great to have. Like, if we would have just flipped these two, that would have been great to have this last turn. Okay, rally. Not bad. Return to us. So I did want to play the Haunted Relic first. Last turn. Because I was worried about... Um, I was worried about playing Haunted Relic and then they play uh, Ruination. So I was just kind of figuring how, how they played nothing on turn 8. It just felt like they were trying to set up Ruination. For turn 9. Seemed like the most logical thing. So basically, I'm, I'm going to let damage happen like this. If if uh, they use some kind of removal, keep Karma alive, then we'll have single combat to kill Karma.
but this is going to be hard from here. That deny, you know, the that was a great turn nine for them. Rekindler deny. It's probably over now. You want me to do single combat first last turn because of deny? Why why would you deny single combat last turn? What what would I do? I would have my 4-2 fight their 4-4. Four, four. Why would you ever cast deny on that if you're the opponent? Like what like that's just a good trait. Like that playing single combat would have been great for them. They would have been very happy. Do I get to do I get to rally at the end of turn with this? Oh, no, 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 because we already had things die. So, no, we, we had things die. What's the best order to play these three? Well, the thing is, is like the Lucian first, because, you know, we want to see like if we want, we want Lucian to be in play if something dies, so we rally. That that doesn't matter while we have the attack token. So that only matters if we don't have the attack token anymore. I guess I should have attacked with Hecarim too, shouldn't I? I think of playing, like, not attacking with Hecarim kind of plays better for a longer game, but that's probably just a mistake. I need to just try my best to win that turn. Yeah, and this thing has Challenger. I, 
Yeah, that was that was a mistake not attacking with Hecarim. Yeah, I don't have a longer game. No, I don't. Y'all are right. With attacking with Hecarim, we wouldn't have attacked with all the uh, the four ones because we would have been attacking with five twos instead. They don't have any fast speed removal. We have a chance. Pretty likely they have fast speed removal though. Okay, we do not have a chance anymore. Yeah, that was that was my hope with single combat on Hecarim's blocker, get the overwhelm in. Okay, well I uh, yep, I need to attack with Hecarim also and have them block with at least at least block with one of their champions. Um would not have been would not have been lethal, but I guess they would have had to block with really with both of their champions. Would have been able to take out both their champions. So yeah, that that was just poor Poor decision. Um, am I keeping single combat? I'm not keeping any of those. No, we're not going to keep single combat either. Yeah, it's all, all around poor decision to not attack the room. That's okay, we live, we learn. Card. I mean, do I block? We go to twenty either way. If I don't block, the thing is, is if I don't block, then uh, you know, then I attack back, and you know, they can take it, and then they can just attack me back for three life steal again, and they can keep on attacking me back for three life steal. I think I have to. Because while Sen is a 4-2, that card's essentially a 6-2. It's dealing 3 to me, gaining 3 for them. It's affecting... Um... Making the deads deader. 
Six life. Corruption everywhere. So they'll play something and get the 2-1, and the 2-1 will kill Senna, and then we'll play Radiant Guardian. Thanks, Adam. Yeah. Games are going well. Never mind. I guess they're going to just obliterate that thing. So we would not be able to Radiant Guardian. Sounds awkward. These blighted caretakers have kept being awkward. Just like the only thing to do. I don't think we waste vengeance on Maokai when vengeance can um, vengeance can actually take out Nautilus. must be really awkward too. They didn't do anything at turn six. All right, ruination gone. Good to know I don't need to play around that card. You think they're gonna have two ruination? Certainly possible. Could just go jettison. Uh, yeah, they got they have jettison. Yep. Makes sense for how they have been doing very much else. They have jettison. GG's.
Yeah, I mean, Ruination, if you're playing Shadow Isle, a slower Shadow Isles deck, you need to be playing Ruination. It's just a great card. I've, I've only seen one in, in basically all these lists. I guess, you know what I'm saying, some people play two, which I, I don't dislike playing two at all. The card's amazing, but I've, I've personally only seen one. But yeah, I could definitely have more than one. Suppose. So we don't get to... We couldn't play Senna first for a blocker because then they could just play mostly free sea monsters. Continually after that. Purity and peace. Not really know what we're doing. Our deck was just really, really awkward this time playing it. Alright, yeah, there's something wrong with this ranking system. Earlier we won and didn't move anywhere. There we lost, we didn't move anywhere. There's something wrong with it. But yeah, our deck was super awkward. Like, Blighted Caretaker never looked good. Um, Ravenous Butcher was horrible. <laughs> Ravenous Butcher was like our worst card. Never got to do anything with it. I mean, I guess if it, one at time we got to kill something with a Ravenous Butcher to turn on Radiant Guardian, but most of the time it was just stuck in hand. Haunted Relic was pretty awkward. Yeah, there's just a lot of awkward stuff with this deck. Um, and then, yeah, it's, it seemed like we had so much top end. We couldn't draw anything but top end. But there's only only eight cards, you know. So I guess, you know, eight out of 40 is 20% of your deck. The 20% of our deck costs five or more, which isn't, isn't absurd. You know, that's 80% of your deck is not that. But we just had this 20% so much. Um... So yeah, this, this deck really felt awkward. Um, I think turn two Curse Keeper is like the thing that really makes this deck a lot better. Curse Keeper turns on Caretaker, it turns on Chronicler of Ruin, but we, we never had that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think I feel like this needs to go a little bit farther into the ephemeral stuff. Um, and maybe not like Haunted Relic that's only for like one turn kind of thing. The Haunted Relics were kind of rough. Y'all know how much I really like Stirred Spirits. I kind of feel like we need to go more towards Stirred Spirits with this kind of deck. But, oh well. Um, yeah, uh, you know, Hecarim was, was good. You know, Hecarim's just great. Um, Shark Chariot's great, but um, a lot of this other stuff, super awkward. All right, anyway, there we go. That's Lucian Ephemerals. Um, yeah, wanted to give this deck a try again, but you know, it didn't feel as good this time as it did the first time, which that happens a lot with different decks. Anyway, those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.